It's not as if you guys are creating clouds out of nowhere. You actually target storm systems. If there's no clouds in the sky that have any moisture in them, then uh, we can't do anything. What we can do is tap into what's there and assist Mother Nature. Kind of like a steroid kick for the clouds or something. Exactly. <laughs> its forms, water powers our very existence. A droplet's epic journey from sky to sea is an elegant loop that sustains all life on this planet. But today, about a billion people are living in water-scarce areas. In the United States, there's California, where in one single year, a historic drought cost the state over 10,000 jobs and nearly $2 billion in lost revenue. The effects of climate change and the strain of an ever-growing population have combined to disrupt global water supplies. But what if we could hack into the water cycle and unlock more precious water from the clouds? A decades-old technology long shunned by science may hold the key. Since the 1946 experiments of Dr. Vincent Schaefer, we have known that some clouds can be modified through seeding to yield additional precipitation. What exactly is cloud seeding? Cloud seeding is really an enhancement of the natural precipitation process. So basically you're just making the storm more efficient, getting more moisture out of it. Exactly it. To do that, pilots target clouds full of moisture and eject small amounts of an inert chemical. Then, the water in the cloud condenses around the new particles and gets heavy, falling to the ground as precipitation. Brian Kindred is one of the company's pilots. He steers right into the heart of storms to fire off a special kind of pyrotechnic. And what's inside of these guys? Uh, it's a silver iodide mixture. The idea is that we'll be above some liquid water, and as it's falling through, it'll turn it to snow so it can fall out of the cloud. Since the 1940s, people have been seeding clouds and watching the effects with their own eyes. But there's always been something missing. The cold, hard scientific evidence to back it up. That changed recently. In 2017, the National Science Foundation funded a study to determine cloud seeding's effectiveness once and for all. Weather Modification International provided the planes. A team of scientists set out into the Idaho mountains with Doppler radars and state-of-the-art weather stations to record what happens on the ground when planes above are cloud seeding. What did you guys find? The aircraft flies through that and you can see the ice crystals grow right on the radar and you can see the snow showers form and as they pass over the mountain you can see the snow very visually and conclusively is produced from the cloud seeding aircraft that just flew through that particular cloud and system. Radar images show how ice crystals formed in the clouds in the exact pattern that weather modifications pilots were flying the long-awaited scientific proof that cloud seeding was working had finally arrived. But there's still questions about its long-term effects. How does making it rain in Idaho affect what happens a state over? Who owns the precious water in those clouds? And the effects of silver iodide on the environment are still debated. For now, national weather bodies have yet to endorse the practice of cloud seeding. I think that people get a little anxious when they hear about people sort of playing the weather god, which in a way you guys are kind of doing here. We're not really playing god. I think that's really overstating uh, what we're doing. Human activity affects the weather all of the time. We're being very specific and targeted and environmentally friendly in what we're doing to enhance the natural, natural precipitation, enhance the natural process. It turns out that some companies will pay millions to enhance the weather. Companies like Idaho Power. The company serves more than 500,000 customers with a network that includes 17 hydroelectric power plants. To them, water is money. Let's do this. Idaho Power has invested over $3 million in a cloud seeding program to increase the snowpack at the state's highest peaks. 
Why is it so essential to increase the snowpack up here? Because we're on the front end and the top end of the food chain for water. So that's what feeds our streams and rivers and feeds our hydro system later in the summer and fall. And that's really when we need that extra energy. How much precipitation are we talking about in regards to the increase in snowpack as a result of these systems? We're seeing generally in that 8 to 15 percent increase. How many homes can that power? Like, what are you getting out of that? On average, that's in excess of 60,000 homes. According to Idaho Power, last year's cloud seeding program has provided a 300 percent return. That's $9 million worth of water that otherwise might have never fallen on these mountaintops. With cloud seeding and a program such as this, it's a huge benefit to someone like Idaho Power. But that additional water is also there for the municipalities, it's there for agriculture, it's there for consumption, so everybody's benefiting. Do you see cloud seeding as a potential drought solution? What kind of impact do you think that cloud seeding can actually make? So cloud seeding is part of the solution. It's part of a healthy water management program. We're not going to solve large climate shifts in, in areas. But if you went back and, and, and looked in California and said, if we had an additional 10, 15, 20% of snowpack and precipitation over the last 10 years, what would be the different story that we have now? It'd be significant. Again, man looks to his own efforts to increase the flow of water. And once again, clouds are forming in the mountains on a moist southwest wind.